Hi everybody, this is Evie. I'm so happy to be interviewing Eddie Vance today. Uh, we're shooting this interview from the Sawa Sawa Festival in Washington, D.C. So pretty excited about it. Eddie, coming from a Palop country, which is not Angola, mm -hmm. could you tell me how you were introduced to Kizomba and Samba? Was it from growing up? Or how did you find out about the music? What music it was? When did you start dancing it? Okay. So, just to be clear, there is a, a misunderstanding that Kizomba is mainly between Angola and Cabo Verde. It's not right. Okay? Mm -hmm. People talk more about Angola and Cabo Verde because initially when they start teaching it was mainly Cabo Verde instructors and Angola instructors. Okay. Like we have been saying all the time, we, it doesn't matter if we call it Pasada and then Kizomba. Yes, Kizomba is from Angola, mm -hmm. but I was raised dancing Pasada. Okay. okay. The same way uh, some some people from Mozambique also, some people from San Tomé. It's all, the thing is, you get to know things because of the number of instructors you have. Initially, when they start teaching, it was mainly Cap Verdeans and Angola. Mm -hmm. So naturally, people talk more about Cap Verde and Angola. But no. In Guinea-Bissau, we actually, everyone dances Kizomba also. Obviously, we don't call it Kizomba, we call mm -hmm. it Actually, we call it Meia Batida. Oh, really? Meia Batida okay. means half beat. Okay. Because beat for us is Zouk. Mm -hmm. So everything that is mixed with Zouk, we call it half beat. And we used to call it uh, Passada Un Dois, which is the basic you do based on one two. two. Yeah. But I was raised in dancing Kizomba. I was introduced to Semba later because obviously Semba is not from Cabo, it's from Angola. Mm -hmm. He's not from Guinea also. Uh, but the fundamentals of what we use to teach Kizomba, I grew up dancing it. And it's also danced in, at family parties and yes. reunions? Same, and same setup. Mm -hmm. We have the birthday parties, we have any party you have, always end up in dancing. Gotcha. So, it's a, I see a lot of conversation between Cap Verde and Angola and then when we say something it's, no. The same thing, as a matter of fact, Cap Verde, because I'm off Cabo Verde also. Mm. Uh, if you go to Cabo Verde, you will not see anyone dancing. Okay. Because dancing Pasada, I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see people dancing, but it's not really into the culture. It's mainly outsiders of Cabo Verde, the Cabo Verde that lives outside, that do bring all these arguments about. Mm -hmm. But yes, Angola, you can. You, when you watch video, you will see children dancing kizomba. Yes. You can see that that country is where people breathe the dance. Mm -hmm. And if you go to our country and you don't see children doing it, you understand because every country has their their main dance. Yeah. The main dance in my country is gumbe. Mm -hmm. But we all have most of African countries, mid, west, east, south. We have something in common. We have a huge love for zouk and kompa. And that was uh, actually what put us together. This is why the name Palop is a mm -hmm. very strong name among our community because after the, the decolonization, you have the immigration happening from Africans going to their colony country. Yes. And us in Portugal, Portuguese never saw us as Angolan or Cap Verdean or Guinea. They saw us as African. It doesn't matter. So. We had our clubs mm -hmm. where we had something that could uh, w that could help all of us together, which was Zouk mm -hmm. and Compa. And we used to dance Passad on it. And before this commercialization of Kizomba, we really didn't care. Obviously, us, we used to dance Passad, and when we see Angolans with more jinga, with more technicality, mm -hmm. we try to, to copy. It's normal. When you see something that you like more, mm -hmm. you try to follow. But that's it. There is no, oh, it's really from Cabo Verde. Oh, it's really, it is from Angola. But it was very common in the Palop community. And the common thing in all of them mm -hmm. is Portugal. Asada is a Portuguese word. It's not Angolan word. It's not Cabo Verdean word. It's not and Guinean it means word. means stepping. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every time you're stepping, obviously people can use it to uh, and give it a different meaning. 
-hmm. Like today when you, we listen to the word virgula, mm -hmm. the first thing coming in your mind is a circle. Virgula is comma. It's yeah. literally comma. So there is no rotation there. It's just because their name then was added into a technical stuff. Mm -hmm. So people now perceive that every time you speak about virgula means a rotation. Yes, technical on the desk. So pasada means steps. And the basic one, basic two, and basic three, that un and basic and, and virgula and rotation, mm -hmm. they are universal basic. They are not kizomba, they are not tango, they are, because you can find in tango, you can find in bachata, you can find in song. The universal for every dance. Yes, every couple dance. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the common thing in all of them was culmination. What we do because there is also a lot of misinformation of how people perceive Africans. Mm -hmm. the, the main thing is, oh, African people love to party. They start partying from 8 p.m. and they go till 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. That is, in fact, is not part of our culture. It was imposing culture. Because if you live in our country before 75, mm -hmm. you had curfew times. Yes. Oh, wow. So, so you couldn't the, party all night. Yes. So during the curfew time, if I invite you to come to my house, you if I there is time of curfew, mm -hmm. you need to be in my house before the curfew finish, and you can only leave my house after the curfew is open. So after decolonization, our, our generation that came after, we did not. We thought that that was a normal thing, but that is not our culture. It was. Mm -hmm we had to adapt to the situation we were. Like African people, they don't write. That is not true. That is another cultural imposition. Mm -hmm. Because when you live in colonization, one of the main thing is you need to divide to conquer and you need to keep them uh, unliterary, which they have no access to study. Mm -hmm. So yes, we as African, we always have the culture to listen to the old people telling stories about their life, but also people need to understand that Africa is a continent that always had people outside coming and taking over. Before Europeans, you had Arabs that colonized us. <coughs> so we had to adapt into other people's culture. When Roman went to Egypt, the first thing they did, they destroyed the library. Why? Because then they can rebuild the history the way they want. Mm -hmm. So all these affect the way we perceive the dance and it has an influence the way we dance also. So how I perceive it is the main common thing between all those countries that were colonized by Portuguese was the Portuguese influence in terms of couple dance. But then we create our own identity into the dance. And then when we move into Portugal, Kizomba become identity because that was how we as Palop could share something we like and mm -hmm. be together. So I know it's a long thing I explain, <laughs> but just to people understand that being part of being born in Guinea or Mozambique or Sotomay, it's very normal, common for you to also be raised dancing what is Kizomba today. Kizomba, that's right. Yes. And, uh, and then you mentioned that partner dance, I guess, idea came from Portugal because it's country. No, country idea dance, came from right? European. I don't believe it came from it's Portugal. From because Portugal. doing research, the oldest dance I have heard couple dance was actually waltz. Mm -hmm. And I'm still looking, searching for anything coming from Africa that could show us partner dance before the era. Mm -hmm. Because after that, you can see the influence that he had in all dances, all other countries that were colonized by any European country, like Cuba. Son, it's a part of dance. And if you watch people dancing song, you will see the same fundamentals, mm -hmm. side to side. They may do it side to side differently, because we never went to any school to learn how to dance. It's how we perceive the dance, and then we create our own identity. Okay, so. The one question I ask all my interviewees, of course, is do you think that urban kids is a separate dance from Kizomba? Definitely. 
any dance that does not belong to culture, to our culture, we do not have power to evolve them. Mm -hmm. It's a fact, historic fact. Okay, what do we do? We mutate that dance, we change that dance to fit how we perceive the dance, to fit how we feel the dance. Obviously, in Angola, only Angolans are going to be able to evolve their dance. For one reason. You go to classes, you learn the final product, Kizomba. Mm -hmm. In Angola, they learn Semba, they learn Ribita, they learn Kazukuta, they learn uh, Carnival dance. Mm -hmm. We don't have access to that. So those rhythms they had, those fundamentals they had when they apply it to their dance, they evolve in the dance. And you can see from watching videos from five, ten years ago, how we used to dance Kizomba. Now we dance Kizomba today. Why? Because we, our Kizomba came initially, was influenced by social Semba. Mm -hmm. Today, Kizomba we dance is influenced by Semba show. Okay. So the moment Semba show become a thing in Angola, which is the new generation, they all focus on it based on tricks, on a lot of footwork, Kizomba naturally evolved into that. When the dance came, become commercialized, naturally changed, and it changed from starting from one thing. But the final dance is the music. Uh, in Europe, 90% of instructors, mm -hmm. their tool of work called Ghetto Zuko Toreshi. It's not Kizomba. That's the music. So the music dictates how they dance. If you go to Angola or you go to any other African countries, they will never teach you uh, with Ghetto Zuko or Tarashinya. They will teach you with Kizomba or Semba. So naturally, most of your movements come from Basic 2. Mm -hmm. And if you see in Europe, Basic 1 is the strongest fundamental people use. Everyone initiates with Basic 1. Mm -hmm. And through the Basic 1, because Tarashinya, because Tarashinya, music and ghetto zook music are electronic people were drawn into it so naturally if i'm a dancer I'm, i want to go to something i like mm -hmm. and the r&b influence the many connection with european influence made people fall in love for what they call kizomba which is ghetto zook but say if you're the social eddie and they play a ghetto zook song you will still be dancing Kizomba today, right? Yes, obviously. But what you're trying to say is that when teaching and when learning Kizomba, it needs to be taught to Kizomba and Samba song as opposed to Ghetto Zook and Tarashinya. When learning, okay. when learning. So, Ghetto Zook exists for 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just got in shock when people say, but it only makes sense dance uh, Urban Keys in, Kizom in Ghetto Zook songs. And I'm thinking, do you know that Ghetto Zook existed 20 years ago? So you, you, you think that all this year we never danced Ghetto Zook? We were waiting for Urban Keys to be created to be able to dance on Ghetto Zook <laughs> song? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. So Ghetto Zook, you have different tempos. You have faster tempo and you have slow tempo. Mm -hmm. When this slow tempo, we dance in place, Tarashinya mode. Yes. When this faster tempo, we dance on Kizomba mode. Mm -hmm. Just like that. So you, you think that the main difference is, is the culture? The dance, right? No, the fundamentals are different also. And the fundamentals? Obviously. Like any dance, you you are born, mm -hmm. and then with time, you become mature. When Kizomba, when the first generation started dancing Kizomba, I heard that many old people in Angola that used to dance Samba, they were happy also yeah, with that, right? the new generation dancing Kizomba. Mm -hmm. So it's natural that every time there is something new come, the ones that was already dancing the one before, they came to criticize mm -hmm. because they will pick, they will see differences. Urban Keys naturally is evolving because it was a baby from that happened three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And you can see the evolution of Urban Keys from the way Urban Keys is today, just from two years ago. It started with Curtis. Curtis mm -hmm. had a Kizomba background. Curtis danced close. You can see that on his dance is very much Kizomba. Mm -hmm. He just made it in a slow pace. Then you have Anna Moon. They brought this connection. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and they start adding a lot of salsa movement. And then people that was falling in love for Curtis, they start moving to uh, Curtis, um, uh, Moon and Anna. Anna, because Moon and Anna brought uh, open way of dancing, brought salsa movements there, and brought one most important thing. Technically, mm -hmm. when you see an African dancing, his focus is from hips down. Mm -hmm. When you see an European dancing, their focus is hips up. So, European watching Kizomba and watching followers dancing Kizomba, they would say there is no technicality there. That is not appealing. Because really that did not have what they look for when they watch dancers. They look for arm movement, they look for upper body movement, mm -hmm. they look for more accent on that. So they think that nothing's going on. Yes, but they don't <laughs> understand that the technicality, yeah. it's hips down. Yeah. So there is a timing that you play with instrument, there is everything. So they had to change it to fit. Mm -hmm. Plus, culture way of living also influence how you perceive a dance. If you are born in a Latin country, mm -hmm. Spain, Italy, France, Portugal, because people think that Latin country means South America. Latin countries are from the country that the language Latin influences. Mm -hmm. So they have the culture of hugging people, being connected. If you are raised in England or any country that was influenced by England, Germany, uh, I don't know if in Russia or East uh, country they do the same, you have the hi, how do you do? Yeah, they wait So on the you, you have <laughs> what they call personal space. Mm -hmm. So it means that if I'm going to dance Kizomba for many people, there is the issue of personal space. Oh. So dancing clothes not going to affect the way I will dance. So if someone bring a dance that there is a space, now I feel more comfortable. People are more comfortable. Dancing. So now you change already mm -hmm. the main essence of the dance. Mm -hmm. So if our dance is based a lot in chess connection and you take that, it's no longer Kizomba. Because mm -hmm. you already take one of the sense of it. And there is so many fundamentals that we use that you don't see that. You don't need to add a tango movement or a salsa movement to be creative in Kizomba. Mm -hmm. You know why? Fact. Kids from Angola, they're still doing it forever without adding all those things. Mm -hmm. And they're still being creative every day. So the dance itself ha has already so much substance that you should use, you can use to be creative without calling it a fusion. Mm -hmm. So the fusion for me truly is a skews. Mm -hmm. And I can give you an easy example. If I dance hip hop for 10 years and then I'm introduced into Kizomba mm -hmm. and I become a teacher and I've been dancing Kizomba for two years, dance is not genetic, dance is about your muscle memory. Uh -huh. Okay, so naturally my body reacts more into hip hop movement. So if I do not take my time to learn Kizomba properly, I'll feel more comfortable to use my hip hop movement side of the dance and my question is why does people that has a long background of dance salsa bachata mm -hmm. hip-hop 10 15 years the first thing they had in mind is to do fusion in kizomba which is a new dance they are learning and they don't do use steps of kizomba to fuse hip-hop or salsa or bachata does that make sense because they're more comfortable because they've been dancing because your muscle memory. Ten, for 10, 15 yes. years. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is no, oh, I'm black, so I dance better than you because you are white. Example, Lucia. Mm -hmm. Lucia Nogueira, she danced like an African. She's a Portuguese. Rita, that danced with Pechusa and Mauro. Mm -hmm. She's a Portuguese, she danced like an African. So it's not really about being genetic, it's how you learn. Okay. And it's who you learn. And it's how much you are actually into dedicating yourself into that dance to learn properly. So something that I wanted to share as well, <laughs> my experience, I'm really embarrassed about it, but uh, before I started taking Kizomba classes, I was trying to decide between Brazilian Zouk and Kizomba. And I come from, before that I danced salsa and bachata. Those were the two new dances and they were introduced to North America. So, of course, I went to YouTube and I typed in Kizomba. 
uh, and I watched a bunch of videos and now I understand that none of them were actually Tizong by Samba videos, they were all urban kids. Um, and so finally my choice fell on Kizomba, what I th thought was Kizomba, mm -hmm. because I thought Brazilian Zouk was too complicated with their neck movements. And, and you don't have a hair for that. I don't, yeah. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I actually had longer hair back like then, but anyways. Um, and this is my embarrassment. The first time I'd come to class, and I was with Billy and Monica, Kizomba Harmony in Houston. Billy tells us about the history of the dance. And I had no idea it was an African dance. I didn't even have an idea, even had anything in the back of my mind. Oh, I wonder where this dance came from. And this is what I believe. I believe as a, a people, you should always follow what your heart tells you. Because if you now decide to dance Kizomba, 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 just because everyone that uh, is around you telling you, oh, you should dance Kizomba because it's important for you to learn the original, blah, blah, you will never feel it. Mm -hmm. If urban keys type of music is what really push you, you should do it. It's sad because, you see, you went there to a Kizomba, mm -hmm. we even without knowing that it was an African dance. But naturally, there is something into Kizomba that push you for you to like your Kizomba, okay? Mm -hmm. The same, uh, when Quenda Lima was teaching Kizomba, obviously you can see in every video he does that he has a lot of tango movement there. Mm -hmm. And I had so many people from tango that fall in love with Kizomba because they had something they could relate on his dance. Mm -hmm. They could watch him and say, oh, I like that. You know what, I want to learn that move, that, that dance. So when you add things you always gonna have people bringing uh, new people coming. When Albir and Sara introduce hip hop into what they are doing in Kizomba, mm -hmm. they open a new market. They open a new bridge for all people that used to do hip hop and R and B and do solo to now be into urban keys. So we are all, we always are influenced by something we we like mm -hmm. naturally. Uh, me as an African, I will look more for African rhythm in terms of movement on the dance to to appeal me. Mm -hmm. When I listen to music, there is drums, there is some batuque that I'm looking, there is some guitar where they play that I'm looking to make me feel, I really like this song. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that I don't like it because mm -hmm. it's also part of my generation. But on my generation, I was raised dancing those type of music in a different way. The Rashinha. The Rashinha is not a, a, a Pasada movement. Mm -hmm. You don't travel with the Rashinha, you dance on spot. In space, yeah. But what happened, if you see in Europe, what they did, they used the Rashinha movement and they combined it with Pasada. That's why initially you have all those people dancing mm -hmm. with those movements, very accent on that, because, <laughs> because they were using ghetto zook, mm -hmm. and they could express uh, on that, but they also used to watch videos of people doing a lot of technicality and tricks in Semba and Kizomba, but they could not relate themselves to music because or the music would sound too fast, or mm -hmm. there was no connection that, or they could not find the beat, many things. So they would prefer to go into slow beat, slow tempo, mm -hmm. and be able to do everything they see others doing in a fast tempo music, but they wanted to do it. That's why you see everything is based in tricks. Mm -hmm. the, the way we perceive things in this society, it's all about glamour, it's all about flashy things. So when someone is dancing, his technical can be a high level, but if you cannot see it, you don't think that he has technicality. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. For m most of people, only when you drop someone on the floor or when you threw someone in the air, is and then, then like, you're wow, doing something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the wow thing. Because it happens a lot of time. Yeah. And it's human nature. You cannot run from it. I've been in a workshop where I explain all of that. And I explain to people how important it is to have a, a technicality where it's about you and your partner. Mm 
-hmm. You are supposed to make your partner happy, not to make people that are watching you mm -hmm. happy. And that is also part of society where we are. We want to be accepted, we want to look cool, we mm -hmm. want to be the, the, the guys on the spot or the, the person that everyone say, wow. So many guys, they use their ego. When they're dancing, they don't dance with their partner, they dance to outsiders. Mm -hmm. Technicality should, when we dance, it's a communication, body communication between two people. So whatever happened between us, it should be filled by us. Mm -hmm. So our technicality can be something smooth, can be something with just details that we feel. Doesn't mean that does not have technicality. But then what people perceive in Europe is, this dance is so boring that you can learn in five minutes. Mm -hmm. So there is and no technicality can't. there. And it's not a simple dance, actually. <laughs> I wanted to quit maybe three times because the body movement felt so complicated for me. I never thought I would get it. Even Angolans, um, you know, they say, we don't have, it, our dance is not very complicated. It's very simple. I mean, it maybe looks simple and there's no tricks or like throwing people up in the air. But to achieve that body movement, it is you have to put in the work. To achieve the fluidity on Kizomba yeah, is the hardest thing you can have. Mm -hmm. Because there is many movements that they do in urban keys that come from Kizomba. Yes. It doesn't have smoothness. Hmm. It doesn't have fluidity. So they're like separate, right? There's like stops in between. Is that what you're saying? It's not a constant flow? Yes. Okay. In Kizomba, it's a continuity. Yes. Fluidity. It, it never stops. Uh, yes. So, and in, in, but again, to music that they dictate that. Mm -hmm. You can find those tops very easy in a ghetto zuka and yeah. You don't find those tops very easy in Kizomba Semba. Mm -hmm. So once you take out the primary thing of the, the dance, which is the music, mm -hmm. you naturally gonna change the music. And what Westerns and I say Western because it's a fact, it's a historical fact. Mm -hmm. What they do every dance that does not belong to them, they need to change it. You have bachata. It's sad that today, for me to say to someone, I dance bachata, I don't, but if I had to explain, I dance bachata, I need to say, oh, I dance bachata Dominican style. Mm -hmm. No, bachata came from Dominican. It's not a style, yeah. <laughs> it's a dance, mm -hmm. okay? It's because Western take the dance, they change it, but they want to keep the name. Mm -hmm. And that is what create this cycle of argument the argument is not just in Kizomba scene. If you are in Bachata scene, <laughs> I see the same arguments going over. The cycle doesn't change. But why? Because the same people are doing the same thing. Are there any other examples besides Bachata? Tango. You have Tango Nuevo, you have Tango. Tango has been changed. Oh, okay. And the common thing they change is the music. Okay. Urban Bachata, Tango Nuevo, mm -hmm. Zouk, mm -hmm. Neo Zouk. Uh, all those things. So the primary thing people does is changing the music. Mm -hmm. Because Zouk, it's another name appropriation. And the history of Zouk, Zouk doesn't exist in Brazil. Zouk literally was, what, you, what people dance today, it's a, a, a mutation of Lambada. Mm -hmm. Because when Lambada music stopped, or when la dancers, uh, lambaderos, stopped having music, what they did, North of Brazil went and took, because North of Brazil is close to Caribbeans, so they took Zouk, and they started using Zouk to dance lambada. Mm -hmm. So initially they used to call it lamba Zouk. Mm -hmm. Lamba from the dance, Zouk from the music. Today, when you say to someone, I dance Zouk, everyone thinks that it, it needs to come from Brazil. When Zouk is from Guadalupe or Martinique, they have their own music and they have their own dance. Mm -hmm. People can say, well, but when you Africans, you also dance Kizomba and Zouk, mm -hmm. but we don't call our dance Zouk. Yeah. We are dancing a different dance into a, a music. We don't call it Zouk dance. Does that make sense? Okay, so but going back to the music though, uh, Ghetto Zouk, I mean, I may be wrong, uh, but it wasn't initially composed by Europeans, right? Wasn't it just people from 
the palace community as well. I okay. mean, that's, that's like, when you say like when the Westerners change the music, I don't know. Western, it's always, it's all, it's all, it's all, okay. Nelson Freitas yes. is not Cap Verde, uh -huh. just to make it clear. Okay. Nelson Freitas was born in Holland. Okay. Okay. His parents are Cap Verdeans. So he's second generation. Exactly. Okay. So even if you are not born there, I was raised in Portugal. Mm -hmm. My culture is Portuguese culture because I did study there. Okay. I do have another culture, my parents' culture, mm -hmm. my country culture. Mm -hmm. When you are an immigrant and you move to a country, you as a child, you're going to be raised into two cultures. Your house culture and the culture of the country where you are raised, being raised. So, Johnny Ramos, Nelson Freitas, Eddie Parker, which is Nelson Freitas' brother, uh -huh. they were raised in Holland listening to R&B and hip hop. Okay. As a matter of fact, Eddie Parker is a rapper. Mm -hmm. okay? So naturally, they had both culture in one person. His parents' culture yeah. and Something the like society where he lived. So what he did, he combined them. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because Nelson, uh, Johnny Ramos, when he initiated uh, Ghetto Zook, the old Ghetto Zook was made for African community. So it was more into Kizombish. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So it was slowing down, it was adding R&B, but he was still feeling, having that strong flavor of Kizomba. Nelson Freitas and Kaisha, because mm -hmm. he's not a polyp, but he has a huge influence on the market, okay. uh, they changed the game when they start adding more R&B into what they do than Zook rhythm. Okay, and that's when the that music was started exactly. sounding differently. The moment they change it, again, you start having all the Western saying, oh, we can relate to that. And so, just to, like, I guess, as a conclusion, if you take Kizomba and an Urban Kiss, and you look at the culture behind them, the cultures are different. Totally, one is European culture, mm -hmm. but Urban Keys is trying to find his own identity. Yes, yeah, very young. Yes, so people are saying, "Oh, you know, Urban Keys change a lot." Mm -hmm. It's normal. In order to you to build the setup of a dance, there is fashion of movement that comes and go, mm -hmm. but then they stay there as when someone wants to teach how to get. I was giving an example of Urban. Start from Curtis very close into Kizomba. Then he moved to Enan Moon, which is great open and mm -hmm. uh, arm movement. Yeah. Then you went to Lohan, which bring the tippy toes mm -hmm. up. Kept connection, but brought tippy toes. Yeah. Then he changed into Jojo, which brought lift. Mm -hmm. Then you have Gwenny and Stacy that add the upper body, which they call it Tarasho. And if you go to Europe, you will see the combination of all those movements now in what they call Urban Keys. Mm -hmm. So Urban Keys is evolving. It's in the next five, ten years, Urban Keys is going to be a defining dance because you will get his own identity. Right now, he's a child that came from a parent, but is changing the same. Mm -hmm. It's not because you are the child of your parents means that you are your parents. Now you have your own idea. And because you also were born in a different era, mm -hmm. your way of seeing life is definitely not the same of the way they perceive life. Wait, but you're saying that Urban Kiss is a child of Kizomba, though? Oh, yes, obviously. Okay. Uh, so that's the link. Yes, obviously. Okay. Urban Kiss was influenced by Kizomba. As as the I first know. baby steps came from Kizomba. Mm -hmm. But the last three years changed, which is natural. What the biggest problem here is the fact that the name keeps. And yes, so they're calling and, it. Kizomba. And that perpetuates the fight. Mm -hmm. I will give you a very easy example. Semba had influence from Masemba, Ribita. No one never call it Urban Ribita <laughs> okay. or Ribita 2.0. They call it Semba. Mm -hmm. Kizomba had influence from Semba. They didn't but call it's called it. Kizomba, yeah. yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. So you can give it a different name and create its own identity and people will still fall in love for it. Why people are very creative to change the dance, but they still Not want really to get like the name. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. And that perpetuates the, the fight or the argument. Because you know what? If you now change the name Urban Keys from, I don't know. Uh, I couldn't come up with a name. 
Okay, let's just okay. call it Tom. Okay. <laughs> and then come on, someone come and say, this is not Kizomba. You say, no, this is Tom. Yeah. The conversation died there. Uh, yeah, and, and like that new name, I guess it, it never appeared. I'm not sure if it will appear at this point because Urban, like that, Urban Kiss kind of, it crystallized. Now become a brand, so. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but just, I guess, well, it's my speculation, but Kizomba is a, it sounds, it's a more beautiful word in itself, Kizomba. It's melodic, and instead of saying Urban Kiss. So I, I feel like sometimes people, or if I go to a social, in most cities, unfortunately, you know, there's not a balance, a 50-50, for example. They'll be playing, they'll be dancing urban kids on the most part. But I still say, I'm going to Kizomba social, which is not, I guess, completely true. I'm supposed to say I'm going to an urban kids social, but just for me to pronounce urban kids, it's more complicated. But you know what? Because ur urban, it's a name that you know, it's part of a language that you speak. Uh -huh. Kizomba is not. But so it's normally when it's something that does not belong to us, it sounds like uh, romantic. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it's almost like English people, they have a lot of French words that sound very romantic. Mm -hmm. Because it's not English the word. And French people does the same, and Portuguese people do the same. Do you have any same. idea who came up with the word urban? Well, I was one of the person, I was the person that put them together. You suggested the name. No, I, I never suggested the name. I, I was just wondering no. who, who called it urban because... It was Moon. Okay. okay. So what happened is we had a, I had a conversation with them in Sweden. We, uh -huh. had, we were all in a festival. Okay. Uh, and it was funny because at that time used to call Kizomba French style. Yeah. So the festival was a Kizomba festival, but the only Kizomba teacher that were there was me and Lucia. Mm -hmm. All the rest was Moon, Nana, and everyone. Uh, and I had to spend, me and Lucia had to spend all night long dancing, not Urban, but the Tarashinha, uh -huh. really electronic. So Babakar, the DJ Babakar, mm -hmm. was there also. And the moment he arrived, the first song he played, I will never forget, was Kiaku, uh -huh. Kilamba. And it was a, it's a Kizomba song. Yeah. The moment he dropped that song, Moon and Nana, they left their partners. And they went they sit down so mm -hmm. i went to them and i say it's funny you guys call yourself kizomba teachers yeah but the only kizomba song that was played in the night you didn't dance it so then after that i say you guys need to find a name mm -hmm. so then i spoke with curtis mm -hmm. because i'm a, i have a very good relationship with curtis and we are supposed to meet in luxembourg festival mm -hmm. it was luxembourg where everything so we had a meeting i still have the video uh -huh. One day I will publish that video. I just don't publish because a lot of things happen there and if it comes up, people okay. will be shocked. Was it like a debate or something? It, yeah, it was a debate that went into, not not physical fight, but it went to some swearing words and... Okay. Anyway, so on that debate was me, Cazuza, Desmara, Lucia, Mafalda, uh, Felicia, and, uh, Laurent, mm -hmm. Moon, uh, and now uh, Curtis, we are all there. So I was telling them, you guys need to find a name. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could stop this war. And then we had another meeting because we were just jumping festival to festival in film festival. Uh -huh. And it was when Moon came and said, look, there is a name that we decide and blah, blah. We've been using the name for a long time. Excellent. And oh, he yeah. said, no, no, that's what, that is in Madrid. So that was where they said Urban Kids. Mm -hmm. I actually have a video on YouTube where we... And who said that? Moon? Yeah. Okay. So then I made a video with Moon saying, okay, so from now on, the name of this new dance will call Urban Kids. Okay. When the way uh, Moon explained to me at the beginning, mm -hmm. it made sense for me. Because he explained to me, say, Urban to define the type of music we listen. Urban to define the R&B pop type of music we listen. Why urban though? Why in the streets? Or because Kizomba is dancing in the streets as well. Urban is, but you know what? It's not, it's it, not like a provincial. People need yeah. to understand is how we perceive things. Uh -huh. Outside of America, urban means black movies, hip hop movies. You cool. Okay. Oh, okay. So everything that is house, 
hip hop, mm -hmm. R&B, rap is urban fast. Okay. So because they were using those type of music, they decided to go into urban the way Americans use. And Keys because he was influenced by Kizomba. Mm -hmm. So for me, it makes sense. It made sense. But then Pichu called me and Pichu told me something that at the time I didn't think. He said, you don't care too much that they have keys because Kizomba does not have any meaning for you because it's not part of your language. Mm -hmm. Kizomba is Kimbundu, so the feeling that when they use the word keys is still part of Kizomba. So why they don't, and plus Kizomba and Simba, they are urban dances. Yeah. <laughs> so I was trying to explain Pichu, but then I felt like, you know what, I should already tell them to find another name, but you see, I finished making the video public say, so from now on call Urban. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't make sense for me now to go yeah. and say, you know what, it's yeah. wrong again, yeah. let's change. Yeah. So that would just bring more war. Mm -hmm. But yes, I was the one who made it official because after they told me we made a video, me and Moon, we said, so call Urban. And from that moment, it started being called Urban. Oh, it's so funny. I was wondering, like, who came up with it, and it turned out to be you, and you're sitting right I did not seat. came with name. Well, you got Very a, important. You, you helped, you helped kind of... Yes, uh, because we are having a huge war, they will all call it Kizomba. Mm -hmm. And I was explaining to people. So if you go to a festival and you have a Kizomba class from Pechu, and Kizomba class from Ena, and you are a, a, a new student, yeah, and you go to Pechu, and Pechu say, yeah. okay, we hold this way, uh -huh. we do this way movement, and then you go to Ena, and he said, no. Yeah. Well, there is no connection there. Is, you're gonna be like What is happening here? These two people are crazy. Yeah, so I was desperate for them to find a name okay, yeah. And you know when you are desperate then you end up to accept anything mm. because we had One week before after we announced public that we would go to find a name and well jump and he create he's on the 2.0 uh -huh. which we completely ignore him because there is nothing more to respectful than you create a name like that. 2.0 means something that is better than one before. So Enwell literally said to the world, my dance is better than everyone from Angola. Because my dance is Kizomba 2.0. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your dance is just Kizomba. Mm -hmm. So I am the better level mm -hmm. than what you dance. So we just ignore it because that wasn't even something to to carry on because the more we would speak about it, probably would uh, stick. So Urban Keys, well, it sounds better that time. Now I had a conversation with Anna. He wouldn't mind to change the name, but he just said that now he's such a big brand that is difficult. But the sad thing is, many people still use Urban Keys, but they call it Kizomba. Okay, yeah. Like you said, you went to a a party that they call Kizomba, but mm -hmm. in fact it was Urban Keys. Yeah. And this is how we feel. Because everyone wants to know about, oh, you know, uh, African people, they fight a lot with Urban Keys, it's, they bully us. We are the ones that are bullied. Mm -hmm. And I can explain to you easy, because no one stopped to think how we feel. Colonization is part of slavery, okay? It just has a different name. Slavery, they took People from Africa, they brought to different country. Then they realized we can now go to their country and take over their country and dictate how they should live. Colonization only finished 45 years ago. It wasn't 150 years ago, mm -hmm. okay? So I am 41 years old. Mm -hmm. I was literally born after decolonization and I saw, I went through many things. I ate things, I went through many things in my life. Okay, so I did not hear the histories from my parents. I leave some of them. And it's very common, you see the houses from the, the Portuguese being huge houses. Mansions. And we live in ghettos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is exactly what happened on the dance. Nothing changed. It's a system that no one cares because when you are not on the people's shoes, you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. So we are the one raised into Kizomba, we start teaching it. Today, we go to a Kizomba festival. The name of the festival is Kizomba. Mm -hmm. But the moment we step into, they literally tell us where we belong. It's not an inclusive dance anymore. They say, this big room is for white people. 
that small room for you because 90 percent of those festivals the small room is kizomba traditional oh and the big one is open too yes and if you see this is how we feel and we comment many times behind the scene i step in they are telling me that i don't belong there that small place is where i belong i've never actually i've never been well i haven't been to many festivals yet but I've never seen actually one room be bigger than the other. They were like the same size. One would be full, for example, crowd, and the other one won't have. So and sometimes if you go to Europe, it's a norm. So in Europe, the bigger room is... The huge room. But I guess they make it a bigger room because more people dance, serve, and kiss. Yes, So it's do. like a marketing thing. But right? still, it's a division because they are splitting things. People like to say, no, that should unite us. So why you would divide people straight away there? So they should be just playing different types of music. Exactly. This is how we are raised. We are raised listening to Ghetto Zutoroshin, Yakizomba, mm -hmm. Semba and everything. Mm -hmm. And people like to say, people create perception versus reality. Uh -huh. uh, traditionalists are very narrow mind. Mm -hmm. This is the perception. When you go to a Kizomba, Traditional, mm -hmm. you listen ghetto to Tarashinia, Kizomba, Simba, Kompa, Afro House, Hip Hop, Samba. So you listen all type of music. When you go to a ghetto zoo, you only listen electronic. Yes. And if the DJ change for half an hour, everyone is complaining. Oh, okay, they're leaving the dance floor. You see, <laughs> perception versus reality. Mm -hmm. The perception is we are very narrow mind, the reality is different. Perception versus reality. You guys fight a lot. We are. We really want to just be united. So the moment they decide to make a festival, you need to have two rooms. Mm -hmm. Where is the unification there? Yeah. Yes, people have the right to choose, but your action also dividing people, splitting people. Mm -hmm. Because imagine me and you, we are the best friends. You prefer urban kids than Kizomba, and I prefer Kizomba than urban kids. Mm -hmm means that we are going to the festival and probably we are not going to see each other during yeah. the all weekend. Yeah. Because we have different choices. Mm -hmm. Because the moment we get there, probably I'm just going to see if we share the room. Mm -hmm. So how was your night? Oh, like in the hallway. And yeah. we are supposed to be in the same place. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be united. So it's perception versus reality. It's easy to point fingers, but when you see behind the scenes, is no one cares to know how we feel. So how you think I feel, knowing that I was raised into this dance, and today, when you see many of us in, in festivals, we need to dance urban keys. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, we're not invited for next year. Well, I'm saying, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it's a rule, yeah. but it's how we perceive. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? The DJs play urban keys for two or three hours. Someone come and ask me, do you dance? And I say, no. They'll say, you see how arrogant this guy? He's refusing to dance with me. No one will stop to think, maybe he doesn't dance this song. Mm -hmm. This music. Because if I'm in a salsa place and a salsero come and ask me to dance, I will say I don't know how to dance salsa. But if I'm not dance urban keys, it's not professional. Mm -hmm. And then DJ play urban keys. If I want to shine, I cannot shine in urban keys because it's not my way of dancing. It's literally like we're only benefiting one genre. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if we, you see, even organizers, they have the small room and they have the big room. They barely are. They barely go into the small room. So my question is, how do we really know how professional we are? How they really judge, with how many people we really dance, mm -hmm. how we really feel? As a matter of fact, in Europe, many of them they don't even care to bring good DJs that play kizomba. Mm -hmm. They will bring an a urban kiz DJ that plays something of kizomba. Mm -hmm. I've been in a place they call it traditional room. They mm -hmm. play ghetto zook all night long. Oh, so the music isn't really the They were literally the playing old ghetto zook okay. and calling it traditional. Okay. And we need to accept that and we need to be quiet because if we say something, we are the, the bullies, bullies, we are the ones who argue all the time, but no one cares to literally try to, feel, to, to think how we feel. When I step in a festival that has a big room, urban keys and a small room, it reminds me a lot of colonization. So I'm still going into my ghetto place. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that is what happens. I'm saying how we feel. 
And I can tell you that many of us behind the scene, this is how we feel because we always talk. But many of them are very scared to go public because they are afraid that someone, but I always say to them, we need to talk. Because if we don't talk, people will always keep changing. And they will keep changing, keep the name, and they will not allow us to talk. And is the society where we live today with social media. Social media now, you need to be very careful with your words. It's not your actions anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't need to work hard to achieve something. You need to pretend that you work hard to achieve something. Mm -hmm. You just need to post maybe some few things on Facebook say, I'm working hard and people are gonna be like, oh, well, congratulations, you are amazing. You, you, this is society where we live today. So today you cannot even open the word and say, he's a bad dancer, mm -hmm. you're a hater. And the word hate is amazing because if I use a hater on you, I'm defending and attacking you at the same time. Because after I call you a hater, everything else you say, you are a hater. Mm -hmm. Today, you go to a good teacher, good dancer, and there is someone that is not a good teacher and a good dancer. And you as a student, you go to both and you're like, well, why you guys are different? No one will tell you because I'm not on their level yet. They will say to you, we have different styles. Mm -hmm. So bad thing, bad dance doesn't exist anymore on the dance. How is possible you, you have bad lawyers, you have bad <laughs> doctors, you have bad everything. Only on the dance, there is no bad. Bad is part of you actually evolving. Mm -hmm. I didn't start as a good dancer. I still have, I never changed my videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If I show you my videos you from 2010, I watch them and I'm like, <laughs> but it made me happy because I also can see how much I evolve. Mm -hmm. Because it's an evolution. I was raising to until today, I need to learn every day to keep evolving. So how after 40 years dancing something and you still need to learn, someone that do it for two years already evolved something that you've been dancing for 40 years. Even using the word evolution, mm -hmm. it's very disrespectful. It's like, me going to your country, uh, like you have a, a traditional dance there, I don't mm -hmm. know, whatever, and then you've been dancing, your parents have been dancing, your grandparents have been dancing, you've been dancing, and I learned it for two years, mm -hmm. and then I said, mine is evolution. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying you guys are all stupid, because you've been dancing for centuries, you never evolved it. I learned it for two years, I already evolved it. Yeah. It's almost like I feel, so who am I? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do you believe that we don't evolve things? So people just use words, they just talk things without even stop to think how they can affect others. And then when the others react, it's like, oh, no, 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 you are being attacking me. And people need to stop that. So if we really want to unite people, let's make a night where we have everyone dancing the, on the same place. In the same room. And see if that works. It doesn't. It doesn't? No. Oh, it's silly Monica's doing that. It's, it's about it. numbers, okay? You can do it when you have 30 or 40 people. Uh -huh. You cannot do it when you have a thousand people. So what do you think will happen if there's a thousand people? Okay, I did in Vegas, uh -huh. and we had 600 people. So the first year we had 300 people, uh -huh. and I had Urban Keys and his own DJs, and they were blending it. Right, and one you work, room. Uh -huh. yeah, so and you what work, happened? You work fine. Uh -huh. Second year, I did a mistake. I told each DJ to play one hour each. It was the worst thing I did in my life. What happened? Because every on the hour of Kizomba, Urban Kiss people would come to me and say, I had someone who told me, I don't even like this shit. I'm sorry. Then you can put peep. <laughs> Literally saying my word, like, you come to an organizer that was raising Kizomba and say, I don't... Can you please ask the DJs to change because I don't even like this shit. Oh, when, when they were playing Kizomba. When they were playing. And every time they were playing Urban Keys, bear in mind it was one hour each. Uh -huh. I had Kizomba come in and say, this is too much. <laughs> when are you gonna change it? So I realized, if you do that thing with 50 people, 100 people, it works. Uh -huh. When you go into big numbers, it doesn't work. Yeah. Because human by default we are very selfish we think first of us mm -hmm. and then we think about others so you will think wait a minute i paid to come to this festival i want to listen to the songs i want 
and if someone play three, four, five songs, you think it's too much, especially if it's something you don't like, mm -hmm. especially if it's something you cannot dance. Because if you see when the DJ play Kizomba or Semba and the dance floor gets empty, it's not just because people don't like that music, it's also because they don't know how to dance it. So there needs to be two rooms then? Just to be clear. Uh -huh. It needs to be two rooms because yeah. there are two different dances. Yeah. But they're being said it as one. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest problem. Why you don't have Urban Kiss Festival? Oh, okay, so just separate the events completely. Exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. make a Kizomba festival. Yeah. And you are the player. You know that if you go to a Kizomba festival, you will fully have a Kizomba festival. Yeah. Make an Urban Kiss festival. Mm -hmm. You as a player, but what is wrong is Kizomba festival, and you get there, and 90% yeah. you get is Urban Keys. Mm -hmm. That is my point. Okay. Or, if you're going to call it Kizomba and Urban Keys, be clear with your people with uh, your players and explain yeah. so we have this amount of percentage of this type of music and this type of music yeah, and then they will be understand for what order today to dance they are forward. totally different dances mm -hmm. they are so different dances that if you learn kizomba and you invite someone that only does urban keys you don't match anymore yeah, you I've, guys don't speak the same language anymore i I've, I've actually experienced that because i started out with learning kizomba and i first had this notion that i can just like not change anything uh, and even if an urban dancer invites me, I'll be able to follow. And I realize that I can't. Because that, that your body, not. your body now doesn't speak the same language. And again, people want to say it's a different style. Mm -hmm. You know what is different style? Me, Rico Suave. Do you know Rico Suave? I've heard of him. Okay, Rui, mm -hmm. Fabricio, Bonifacio. Mm -hmm. We all dance the same. Fundamental. But you guys have different it's styles. Style. Mm -hmm. That is a style. Style means you can do something that identify you as a person, but you still have the same fundamental. Mm -hmm. Style means if I'm on, on a dance floor, we can share different followers. We just give them different vibes how we dance, but the fundamental are the same. Mm -hmm. But now, when I go to a place and I ask someone to dance and I am doing that and she's stopping and she's doing uh, two steps and I'm expecting her to finish a step. She's doing a quick one. We are not talking the same language anymore. Mm -hmm. Obviously for someone who doesn't know the dance, probably will be watching outside and say, oh, they're all the same. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Okay. The same way those people that did not understand the dance in the beginning, Kizomba, they said, it's such a dance that you can do it for five minutes. Yeah. It's so easy. And then when you get into your life, mm, <laughs> not right. Fact in Kizomba, once you learn Kizomba, improve your salsa, improves your bachata, improves your tango. I experienced that. You know why? It's good. Why? Because Kizomba is so much focused in tempo and music uh -huh. that it slow down your body. So when you go and you dance salsa, mm -hmm. your body doesn't rush anymore. Okay. Now you have more time to listen to the music and you step your step are more grounded mm -hmm. and it happened with I have so many experience of that uh -huh. that people that jump come from Latin dance jump into Kizomba after years then for some reason they end up in a festival and everyone is like where you have been you improved so much wow. and they're like did I <laughs> the last time I danced was like three years ago because it make you more much more grounded mm -hmm. the same thing doesn't happen if you have the other background to go to Kizomba. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help you in Kizomba. As a matter of fact, if you come with salsa with your uh, yeah. up movement, it will affect. But uh, I guess other African dances will help. If you're it will help also, yeah, yeah because, because they, they make you grounded. Your place down. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time, Eddie. I really appreciate it. I know, it. with me, you always come like that, and you go <laughs> like that.